At a Senate Judiciary Committee hearing last week, Senator Dick Durbin spoke about issues at the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Colette Peters, the new director of the Bureau, testified before the committee. Durbin asked the director about her feelings on solitary confinement, which he said is essential but could also be abused. Director Peters expressed her goal to reduce the Bureau's use of restrictive housing, which she was able to do as director of the Oregon Department of Corrections. Durbin also raised concern about numerous reports of staff misconduct and inmates not paying restitution to victims, such as former USA Gymnastics doctor Larry Nasser and R&B singer R. Kelly. And I'm glad you said at the outset what you said when you were sworn in, that your job was to not make good inmates but to make good neighbors. <clears throat> because the fact is the majority of those serving time in our Bureau of Prisons are likely to be released someday and we don't want them to create more crime or more victims in the process. So let me ask you about a few of the highlights uh, that have come up in hearings in the past, and I'd like to have your thoughts. Solitary confinement is absolutely, excuse me, solitary confinement is essential for safety and security in many circumstances, but it can also be abused and can cause mental damage to the inmate who is separated from contact with other persons for long periods of time. What is your feeling on the issue? You need to turn the microphone on, and if you pull, draw it a little closer to you, it might be more. Fun. Thank you. My team warned me that I needed to get used to doing that. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Um, so the Bureau's goal, of course, is to house individuals in the least restrictive environment possible to ensure their own safety and the safety of staff uh, and other inmates and the public. But your points are very true. Research has shown again and again and again that any type of restrictive housing can be damaging to an individual, especially those who have me mo mental health issues. So this is a priority for me. This is a priority for me <coughs> as director of the Oregon Department of Corrections. This is something we had been focused on for over a decade. We were able to, in Oregon, reduce our use of restrictive housing by 46%. So this is a complex issue. This is one I'm still getting up to speed on at the Bureau, but our values match in this topic area. Area, Senator. This morning, the Department of, or yesterday, the Department of Justice announced uh, they were going to seek stiffer sentences in prisoner abuse cases. Uh, we have, unfortunately, with Inspector General reports, ample evidence that many prison workers have been arrested, charged, or convicted of crimes including sexual abuse, murder, and, con and introducing contraband into prisons. Tell us how you'll deal with uh, that aspect and whether it reflects other problems uh, such as understaffing. Thank you, Senator. Of course, we take allegations of staff misconduct very seriously. We have a zero policy, zero tolerance policy for sexual abuse of any kind. This is also something I've worked on uh, quite substantially in my career, uh, both when I was new to the Department of Corrections in Oregon. We were one of two states who had yet to make felony miscon sexual misconduct in an institution a felony. As the Inspector General, I took this very seriously, um, ensuring that people who did engage in this type of behavior were, uh, hand, were uh, held accountable to the greatest extent of the law. That clearly will be my philosophy here as well, Senator. We are actively participating in a work group right now assembled by the Deputy Attorney General. You referred to the request that the Deputy Attorney General and I had when we met with U.S. attorneys just a few weeks ago to please take these situations and these cases seriously, both to send a clear message to the employees that this type of behavior is unacceptable and criminal, but also to send a message to the corrections employees who come to work every day doing good work that we will fetter out this type of behavior and they will actually be safer in their institutions. Director, I think one of the most memorable hearings we've had in this Judiciary Committee involved the Olympic gymnasts who were exploited and abused by a man who was a medical doctor named Larry Nasser. Uh, there is no sympathy for him after hearing their testimony. Last year, the Washington Post reported that Larry Nasser held over $12,800 in his prison trust account, despite owing $60,000 in restitution payments to his victims. The question Senator Grassley raised just a few minutes ago, I join him. We just learned as well last month that R. Kelly recently convicted of even more crimes, 
held over 28,000 in his in inmate account while owing thousands of dollars in restitution to victims. What's wrong with this system? Why are we letting these people sit on sums of money or receive money from the federal government when they're not paying their fines and they're not paying restitution? Thank you, Mr. Chair. As the director of the Bureau of Prisons and as a former victim's advocate, this issue is really important to me. We had an embarrassing low collection rate in Oregon as well, and subsequently worked with the Oregon legislature to pass legislation that increased that accountability and increased those payments while securing a reentry fund for those in our custody. So I was quite pleased when I arrived at the Bureau that the Bureau had diligently been working in concert with the Department of Justice toward changing the rules in the Inmate Financial Responsibility Program policy, which would allow collection of a set percentage of all incoming funds from participating inmates. So the BOP has been working in tandem with the U.S. Attorney's Office and other government agencies in efforts to increase those restitution collection amounts and a, pro and a proposed regulation is currently under review right now with the Department of Justice. My time is up, but if you believe that we need to change the law so that you can effectively achieve what you've just described, let us know that. I think there's strong bipartisan sentiment that this is an outrage that uh, Dr. Nasser would have $12,000 in an account and still have fines outstanding that he hadn't paid or that R. Kelly had $28,000 and still hadn't paid restitution to victims. That we would be complicit in that kind of conduct is just absolutely unacceptable. Thank Senator you, Grassley? Mr. Chair. Yeah. 